We are inside historic Memorial Gymnasium in frigid Nashville, Tennessee, where the Commodores try to get back to their winning ways. It has been a struggle, 5-8, and 0-1 oh in league play. Alabama, meanwhile, with a big win over Texas A&M to open up conference play. They are 9-4. It is game number two of conference play, and welcome to the Music City. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Neal. This is former Auburn star Damian Fishback, and Damian, two really solid players to focus on tonight, Colin Sexton of Alabama and Jeff Roberson of Vanderbilt. Sexton, the freshman, has been dynamic. He really has. I expect him to lead their team in two different ways. Colin Sexton, you've heard words like moxie and swagger. How about speed? Elite speed and attacking the rim. Look how fast he moves to get to the glass. Tyler Davis now, he's saying, you went by me last time. Well, yeah, you can knock down a jump shot too. How do I stop him? We'll see how Vanderbilt tries to stop him tonight. On the other side for Jeff Robeson, I feel like he's the best glue guy in the SEC. Big, strong enough to go inside and score, leading his team in scoring and rebounding. But when you have a big like Kavarius Hayes, you better get out there soon because he is also lethal from behind the three-point line. And Roberson will have to be huge tonight. He's tied for first in the conference and double-doubles with six. Alabama is a very, very talented team. They can go small. They can go big. They have a lot of things they can do. And if they start putting this thing together, they could be a dangerous team at the end of conference play. So the Crimson Tide will have the basketball first. He's on Ingram, number 12 with the ball in his hands. Dante Hall has been a really impressive player for Alabama as well here in the first month and change of the season. The big fella underneath the basket wearing zero for the Tide. Yeah, shoots 75% from the field, but this is the guy who gets it started. <laughs> Does he ever? The SEC's leading scorer, Colin Sexton, Gets the first basket of the game. Moving so fast, shoes are coming <laughs> off of the opponents, Dave Neal. <laughs> Riley, the chance lost a shoe. Well, this is what you're talking about. Earl the Pearl spin. Nice job of moving quickly to the rim. You have to know where he is at all times on the floor. One note for this Vanderbilt team in the starting lineup tonight is the freshman Maxwell Evans. 6-2 guard out of Houston, Texas, getting the nod tonight. That's because Matthew Fisher Davis has been under the weather. Well, he's been ill, and they will need him to play well. There he is right there uh, to the left of your screen with the beautiful hair, might I add. 12.4 points per game, 37% from the field. They need him to play well for Vanderbilt to continue to play well. I think everybody that has hair has beautiful hair in their eyes, right? <laughs> yeah, with the curls, you know, the flow, a little hair to it. Jump shot. Saban Lee's been playing well. I, I like him as a young freshman, Dave. I think he has promise. He is now beginning to come into his own, surrounded by veteran guys, right, in LeChance and Roberson that are accustomed to doing what they want to do. Little dump down underneath. There is Dante Hall, and you mentioned it's shooting over 75% for the field. If he had more opportunities, he would lead the country. Well, we just got to tell Colin Sexton and Petty and Ingram to get in the basketball more, right? They found him on that possession in a 4-2 ball game. There goes Saban Lee. Baseline off the window, doesn't drop. That one's knocked out of the hands of Cleavon Brown. This is what makes Alabama so lethal. Multiple guys who can get it out in transition, whether it's Ingram, Sexton, or Petty. They can all handle the basketball well. Even Braxton Key, I think they're the most lethal team in the conference when it comes to transition. And already, Bryce Drew not pleased with the play. As you look at Avery Johnson talking to his youngsters. Petty and Ingram, but already substitution coming in that post is Dante Hall has had a couple of good looks, so Jerry Baptiste will come in. The 6'10", 235-pound physical specimen. Aren't many made like Mr. Baptiste. No, not, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wakes up and goes to sleep in the weight room. A little pressure now by Alabama. Both teams will change defenses. We know for Coach Avery Johnson, they want an up-tempo game. I think for Vanderbilt, they need it to be up-tempo, but only offensively. Defensively, they need to try to slow the Crimson Tide down. Evans off the back of the iron. Loose ball. Sexton battling a save and lead. It'll belong to the Commodores with a fresh shot clock. And there's Avery Johnson now in his third year, and he's finally getting this, this program and this team to play the kind of 
basketball that he wants to play. It's been kind of a process, but he says it's still with these young guys. It's kind of a roller coaster. Some nights they just don't bring the energy that they need to have on a consistent basis, and it can be frustrating. Well, I think they love playing for Coach Avery Johnson, and there is Maxwell Evans, Dave Neal, a guy who actually scored 32 points per game in high school, so these teams both like to get up and down. <laughs> Colin Sexton. They list him at 6'3". I don't know if he's quite that tall, but he can certainly elevate and get that shot off over most of his opponents. Lee, nowhere to go, so he'll kick it back out. Roberson Woo. buries the shot. Got some good offense going. This is what we'd like to see. Both teams getting up and down. You're seeing a lot of guards. Both teams really playing four out, one in. The style of basketball has changed so much with the success of Golden State. That's the first possession for Alabama. They came away empty. Here's LaChance. He'll get it off to Lee now. Vanderbilt trailed by 20 at the half to Florida. Cut it to four late, just couldn't close it out, but off to a much better start than they had down in Gainesville over the weekend. Shot clock at four. Lee can't buy the basket. Sexton there for the rebound. This is where Colin Sexton is continuing to learn his game, when to take initiative himself and when to give it up. And some free throws coming up as Roberson will foul days on Ingram. Well, the penetration is so critical for both teams. Saban Lee getting inside. Once he draws the defense, Braxton Key had to get out faster, not out quick enough on Jay Roberson. We talked about him. He is the best glue guy in basketball, and I say that in a commending way uh, because of the way he does it for his teams in multiple ways. Dazon Ingram, who is a 69% foul shooter. This fires on the front end there. 58 of 84 at the line coming in. Solid numbers for Dazon. I'm impressed with the way he has played. You know, guys that were, he was really the man last year for Alabama. And Coach Avery Johnson has done a tremendous job of making his guys understand that they all win together. There's enough baskets to go around. If they're unselfish and distribute the basketball, everyone has a chance to score and do well. Boy, good take. Dante Hall will pick up the foul. That'll be his first. You know the best way to stop a player of another team, right? A couple quick fouls, get him out of the game. I mean, Vanderbilt doesn't have a lot of depth at the front line, and instead of taking the screen, he goes right at Dante Hall, and we know that he has an ability to block shots 23rd in the nation and second in the SEC, but that's how you attack a shot blocker. Go right up into his chin or his chest and get the officials to blow the whistle. Bryce Drew talking to us about Maxwell Evans and how he's a really, really good defender. Just trying to learn the game, though. There are some moments out there, and he might get lost, but from a physical standpoint, and certainly from a skill set standpoint, he's got the tools. And Dave, so many coaches, when I went to look at practices before the season started, asked about Vanderbilt and Maxwell Evans in particular. They know that he's capable. Speaking of capable, if Alabama can get Braxton Key rolling, coming off a knee injury, saw him miss the first 10 games. This is his fourth game back, only two points in each of those contests. But if he can start knocking down shots like that, that's a dimension for Alabama that will make it even more difficult. Whew. No doubt about it. You think about it, they had him in some of the earlier games. He could have played when they went three versus five at Minnesota, right? Would have made a little difference. <laughs> Boy, we're having some uh, nice trips down the floor. La Chance. Able to answer for Vanderbilt in a one-point game. Wow. Braxton Key and a box-out foul on Riley LaChance. Both teams shooting well. Alabama, four out of five. Vanderbilt, four out of seven. Yeah, it's a frenetic pace, Dave Neal. You talk about that penetration when the defense is sucked in. Braxton Key will make you pay. Tied up one.
been fun start to this one. Alabama leads Vanderbilt 13 to 12. It's always fun when you make some shots. And there have been a lot of shots made in the SEC this year in basketball. And the results are some pretty impressive numbers heading into conference play. When you look at Joe Lenardi's bracketology right now, Fish, look at all the teams that he has inside the NCAA tournament right now. Dave, I know a lot of the fans right now watching, they're excited about football, and they should be Nick Saban, a phenomenal job. But it's time to get excited about some basketball in this conference as well. I think eight teams, depending on how the Big 12 SEC Challenge goes, will be the number for this league this year. And there's some teams that are not on that list. You look at a Georgia team who went in and played Kentucky extremely hard and has wins over Marquette out of the Big East, uh, over Temple. You know, these, this league right now is as tough as it's been in over a decade. Amazing how we were just talking about the last couple of years. Two, three teams maybe getting in. <laughs> Would there be a fourth? And now we're talking about, could we get nine in? There's so many people that should be commended for the work that has been done to put this league back in the position that it's at right now. And it's coaching, it's recruiting, it's scheduling, it's all those things. Sure. Leadership in the conference right. itself. Vanderbilt trying to add uh -oh. to their lead. There is Matthew Fisher Davis, first lead for the Commodores. Do not be deceived by the record of this Commodore team. Played USC well, Arizona State well. They have played a, a very challenging schedule, so they're not scared to play anyone. And if they have Matthew Fisher Davis that is able to pick it up, they can beat anybody in this league as well. Here's what we're talking about right here, getting on the floor. You're talking about a, a backcourt that went to the NCAA tournament two years in a row. Matthew Fisher Davis, Roberson, Riley LaChance. If you don't think that class wants to go one more time, then you're deceiving yourself. Fisher Davis didn't practice yesterday. No shoot around today. We weren't even sure he was going to play, nor did his coach know if he was going to be able to play. Uh -oh. oh, I think he's playing. Back-to-back <laughs> -back threes for MFD. You think he's just playing like this so he can get out of practice, not, <laughs> not go to the shooter round? <laughs> if it was me, I'd do it. Uh, but that's me. Never was much of a practice guy. Here's Petty. He can shoot it too now, but off the mark. Commodore's trying to run. Evans. Vanderbilt's made five of the last six, and now we'll head to the free throw line. They're on an 8-0 run. That foul on Daniel Giddens. Well, we talk about penetration and getting to the paint. Jimmy Dykes, who's in the studio, talked about that in Alabama's previous game. When you get to the paint area, it draws the defense. It gets the opponent in foul trouble. It's just like a boxer who goes to the body first and then is able to go to the jab or go to the hook to knock his opponent out. That's what Vanderbilt's doing now when they continue to attack the paint area. Payton Willis on the floor. The chance will take a break. You know, it, it's you and I are getting ready for this game. You start looking at some of the stats. But the one thing that jumped out to me, mm -hmm. how in the world is Vanderbilt, a team that we're so used to shooting the ball so well, how are they last in the league in field goal percentage at 41? They're usually top two or three, if not leading the league. Sure. And they're 12th in three-point shooting. Well, one is because they struggle with inside presence. Mm -hmm. And so when you have the loss of Cornette, you had guys that were accustomed to be able to throw it in and the ball coming back out. Second of all, you have young backcourt, in particular, with Saban Lee, not just the veterans that return. Well, here's a freshman that just wastes little time. Right down the lane goes Colin Sexton. Count the basket. He'll head to the free throw line, and his first step is as good as any. Well, that, yeah, that kind of goes against what I was saying about freshmen. Trey Young, <laughs> Colin Sexton, those are guys that, <laughs> that make you say, well, the, the class does not matter. And that's what we mean when we talk about Colin Sexton. The first objection you have is how do we keep him in front? And I don't know how you do it. I think he has the same speed of Ian Fox, of John Wall at the next level. He is lethal in going to the rim. Talked to him before the practice today here at Memorial Gym and busting out some new shoes. Likes to change them up every game. Oh, nice luxury. And C Coach Avery Johnson changing up the defense, trying to slow Vanderbilt down. And now you see they're getting to their offense with only 18 seconds. And they also go to a 2-3 zone here. Oh, 
off to Fisher Davis. Boy, they got out on him in a hurry. Cross court pass, shot clock at three. Corner jumper, way off the mark. Here goes Dazon Ingram. All the way to the basket, lost the handle, thought he was fouled, and last touched by Ingram, and it belonged to Vanderbilt. Nice save that time by Willis, but I like the defensive change. Right, we look at teams across the country. Everybody's talked about Kentucky playing that zone. And when you sit in zone, you have the opportunity on turnovers to get out and run like Dazon Ingram did that time. And he is vicious when attacking the basket. Okay, let's see on this trip. We mentioned Alabama going 2-2-1 now back into the 2-3 zone. Let's see if Vanderbilt even gets a paint touch. The last time the ball never crossed the three-point line. They beat the press. Top of the key, three. Off to Mark. Avery Johnson, Jr., just checking in, comes out of there with a the basketball. Giddens, number four for Alabama, another big body coming out to post up, set some screens. He's been playing really well. I like the Ohio State transfer. I think you need to go to him more. Gives him some inside presence. Didn't finish that time, but I like the position. Cleveland Brown gets a block shot back the other way. Evans wide open. Dump it down to Giddens. That Ooh. time he did not miss. Big boy basketball. Young man wants to play, and this is what we talk about every single game as a big guy. Outrun your man down the floor, and it will get you a basket or two. Put it in the books, I guarantee it, Dave Neal. Boy, timeout taken by Vanderbilt, who leads by two. A unique building. We'll talk more about some of the advantages and disadvantages of playing here inside Memorial Gymnasium. Only the second trip inside Memorial Gymnasium for Avery Johnson as his team trails by two. A unique building here, and certainly that poses some problems for visiting teams. Damien Fishback talks about it earlier today. The Vanderbilt Commodores, they typically have a huge advantage here at home. For the visiting bench, it's actually on the other end of the floor in the first half, which is where the coaching box used to be, from the basket all the way over here to the star. Well, that makes it challenging if you're Colin Sexton tonight on the road for the first time as a freshman. You have to look way back here for Coach Avery Johnson. Well, then after that, they actually moved the coaching box down a little bit further to around free throw line extended to where it came out right around this C here with the Commodores. A little bit closer for Colin Sexton, our Dave Neal tonight, but still not quite where it is now. Finally, they moved the coaching box out here to this white hash. So it's basically similar like it is everywhere in college basketball. So this time tonight, when Coach Colin Sexton or our Dave Neal <laughs> is actually turning around and looking at Coach Avery Johnson, it'll be a little bit closer for that freshman tonight on the road in a hostile environment. Some great points. <laughs> but I love how you almost broke down laughing when you said Colin Sexton and Dave Neal in the same sentence. Hey, you know, I was looking to see if Dave Neal was going to show some of that speed that we've seen from Colin Sexton here today. But it does make yeah. a difference, especially in that first half, for guys that have never played in this building like Alabama. You know, just think going back three or four years ago, coaches where every Johnson stands right now, you see him at the bottom of your screen. Coaches had to stay on that baseline and cause problems, but now he can coach his team normally. It makes a huge difference, and I, I think you can see that even in this first half. It's just not as challenging as it is for a lot of the freshmen because he is closer. Boy, Avery Johnson Jr. has really been struggling with his shot. See if that one doesn't get him going. I think we all remember that four overtime game last year where Alabama was able to beat the Final Four team in South Carolina where he put up 20 plus points. Avery Johnson has the ability to score. He's just finding his way on this team. Speaking of finding his way, Matthew Fisher Davis with three threes off the bench. And boy, Avery Johnson stomped the floor. He told his guys today, <laughs> you better get out on him in a hurry. And they gave him room to shoot. This is what I mean when I say I think this is the deepest league in the country. You look at Vanderbilt, uh, who people would say they're struggling more than anyone. 
but they have guys that can get it done. You talk about Maxwell Evans earlier. We know what Matthew Fisher Davis can do. Uh, came up short when they fouled Northwestern last year, but this is a guy who can put up numerous amount of points. He is lethal from behind that three-point line, and I guarantee you he wants to dance in March. But let me ask you this, though. Why is he shooting 31%? We all know he's a great shooter. Is it just – it's just – He's in that stretch where shooters don't make him? Well, the first the first response is he's going to be at the top of everyone's scouting report. Matthew Fisher Davis is the guy that they don't want to allow you to, to beat them. Second of all, I think he's still getting accustomed to his new teammates and the loss of Luke Cornett. Yeah, that's a you know huge loss for this Vanderbilt team and shots. A little bit more open for other guys with Luke on the floor. No doubt. Well, that, that affects them not only offensively, but defensively. We talk about a guy that uh, was top of the league in blocking shots, so he gave them an inside presence. He gave them a rim protector. Those are the type of challenges that Coach Bryce Drew is dealing with in the non-conference schedule and will continue to deal with as he goes through this conference schedule as well. The chance won't go. Tapped around by Fisher Davis. Keeps it alive. Roberson got it. Gives some of that to number five in white. Without question, offensive rebound so critical because the defense is discombobulated and allows them easy open shots. Giddens will kick it out to Ingram. Tough take going to the baseline as Herbert Jones staying with it. Let me tell you, Alabama fans, if you don't know about Herbert Jones, you will. When I came to see him at practice earlier, he was the one guy that stood out. They had about six or seven scouts there, and they were talking about Jones just as much as they were talking about Petty and Colin Sexton. Tremendous upside and length, along with a lot of versatility as well. Roberson. That won't go, but another offensive rebound. Roberson to the rim, and he is hammered by Giddens. It's okay. Two grown men going at each other. <laughs> Listen, when we played, it was a lot of that. Giddens not wanting to give up the foul or, or the dunk, and, and Roberson taking it to the basket like a man to actually try to dunk on Giddens. This is a good, solid, hard foul. I like the, the foul called. I don't think it's anything more than that. Who were your boys down the paint? I, I, Take me back to the Auburn days of your yeah. run. Uh, are you kidding me? Chris Porter was down in the paint. Mama do in job. Mama do in Ferocious guys. You look at some of the guys that used to be in the paint for Alabama as well. Irwin Dudley, Chuck Davis, guys that, uh, you, when you think about Alabama, they knocked off the first top five team since uh, the likes of when some of those guys there, Mo Williams, Chuck Davis, when they beat Stanford, that, that was number one in the country in the NCAA tournament. This is what you see all across the league. You're seeing programs that have had pockets of success now all trying to get back to that success at the same time. 22-point victory over a and was the largest margin of victory versus a top-10 team in school history. And that was coming off a loss against Texas in their prior game where they were really from the opening tip manhandled by the Longhorns. So a lot of people wondering, now you got to face Texas A&M? What's that going to turn out to be? Sure. Well, it was all Alabama. Well, when you think about Alabama and the schedule they faced. They faced two Giants, Mobamba, uh, along with DeAndre Ayton at Arizona. And so there's no center or big guy that will intimidate the Alabama Crimson Tide. Vanderbilt playing inspired basketball here in the opening half as they are up five. Eight and a half to go. Saban Lee misfires. Back the other way is Ingram. Jones in and out. Rebound the chance. Solid job defensively. Vanderbilt, the way they play with the small lineup, matches up well with Alabama. Count the basket. Saban Lee. Fouled on the way to the rim, and he'll step to the free throw line. That'll go against Herbert Jones at first. They talk about the Big 12, the Big East, the ACC. Vanderbilt proof that there is not a night off in the Southeastern Conference. Playing with confidence right now, getting the basketball up the floor in a hurry. And Saban Lee playing inspired basketball, the 6-2 guard from Phoenix, Arizona.
can't complete it. Seven point advantage for the doors. Over time, Alabama has had a real adventure trying to win inside Memorial Gym. They have won only once since 1990. That came in 2013, a 58 54 victory against Vanderbilt. But this has not been a friendly building at all for Alabama. However, the series dead even at 68 apiece. A chance and the shot clock goes into single digits. Dante Hall guarding LaChance tries to take him, but that one is swatted out of there by Petty. Wow. Unbelievable. Vanderbilt continuing to play with much more confidence. They're penetrating, getting into the teeth of the defense, and Roberson continuing to knock down three. Vandy by seven. Wednesday at 8.30 Eastern, we'll take you to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge, 17th ranked Kentucky, taking on the LSU Tigers. It's right here on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. LSU going to be a tough out. Will Wade getting that team to play some defense. Hadn't seen a whole lot of that over the last couple of years in Baton Rouge, but a guy that uh, has been unguardable so far off the bench. Matthew Fisher Davis. He's a guy that if you allow him to be comfortable, he will butcher you on any given night. He is a guy that plays with a lot of confidence. Remember when you had Wade Baldwin here, you're looking at the three-point shooting of Vanderbilt on the season, 32.5%, but the last three games, 42%. I hear it all the time that numbers don't lie, but in this particular situation, I think their numbers will continue to increase because they are beginning to gel and formulate that chemistry as a team. You mentioned those last three games, the three-point shooting's gone up. They've also produced 57 assists over that time. That's 19 a game. Numbers that they haven't seen, but maybe, maybe they're starting to turn the corner a little bit. Sure. Well, they're getting better looks, and as they do better on this end defensively, they will continue to get better looks on the offensive end. The chance. Vanderbilt has seven assists on nine made field goals tonight. That one's blocked by Ingram. Levon Brown working hard underneath, and he'll be rewarded with a couple of free throws coming up, and that foul goes against Ingram. That'll be his first. This shows you the importance of defense. Look, Dazon Ingram, really a mismatch that time. Undersides, you got Cleavon Brown at 6'8", Dazon Ingram at 6'5". Why does that happen? Because Vanderbilt got a stop, and in transition, when you have three-point shooters, and as I said, they, they can shoot better than the numbers show, you just got to find them. And so when Bryce Drew talks to his team, you get stops, you get out on the offensive end, then you get those type of mismatches and get an opportunity to score. Brown off the back of the iron, a 41% free throw shooter on the year. Avery Johnson Jr. off to Colin Sexton, who got off to a really good start, but last couple of minutes has had a tough time finding that shot. Back to the chance. Roberson bumps at the free throw line. Dave, Bryce Drew said something to us at the shoot around today that stuck in my mind. He said, when you go with the smaller lineup, oftentimes they want it easy. They expect it to come easier. And you see last year reached the NCAA tournament, the only coach in the history of Vanderbilt that actually did that in his first year. But I think for Alabama, that's what they're doing in the offensive end. I think the guards, Colin Sexton, uh, Braxton keep it. I think they're trying to get it a little too quick and the defense of, of Vanderbilt is set. They've got to get stops on this end if they want transition buckets like right here. Here's key. Braxton. Tough shot. Some contact. He'll head to the free throw line. Tough shot, but at the same time, they got the stop, which allowed them to get out on the offensive end before that defense was set up. I say it all the time because uh, when you hear people say your, your offense affects your defense, how a bad shot will affect you not being in position defensively. Well, when you play small ball, 
you need to get stops defensively and complete it with the rebound in order to get out offensively, which allows you to get spacing and, and lanes to penetrate. Both of these teams will win this game on the defensive end tonight. Braxton Key, SEC All Freshman performer a year ago, led the team in scoring. Coming off that knee surgery that forced him to miss the first 10 games of the year. Well, I think he's critical. Not only offensively, but defensively, he has the ability to guard so many people at that stretch four position. Fisher Davis. Three threes here in the opening half off the bench. And he airmails that and blocking foul against LaChance. And that'll be number two on Riley. Big foul. Huge foul for the senior because Riley LaChance not only gives you a calm backcourt, has the ability to distribute the basketball well, but also defensively he's gotten more comfortable. And that's a tough call that time. Yeah. I agree with you out of the chance. Tough call, tough break. So Sexton at the free throw line, 79% at the line. Got his got his Vandy shoes tonight. Those are the kitchen I brought my, my son Sam with me, the 12 year old. Those two had a complete conversation about shoes. I know nothing about them except they cost a lot. Well, he'll be able to afford them next year. He's one of those guys that will be a top 10 pick. He will have a lot of M's in his bank account, Dave Neal. And I expect him, along with Trey Young, to be one of the top point cards drafted in this year's draft. I told you he wears new shoes every game, but he, he donates the shoes that he, you know, he'll keep a pair to that he really likes, but the ones that he thinks he's going to you know, carry on with, he'll donate them to a local uh, group in the Tuscaloosa area. Nice gesture from Colin. Very nice gesture. Boy, Saban Lee tried to bring down the rim. Didn't get it. Dante Hall with the rebound. Dante Hall finds the basketball and Woo. finds the middle of that backboard. Boy, his game has changed. He is a dynamic big man. So efficient. I mean, and you love to pass it to big guys like that because you're going to get an assist, quite frankly, as a guard. He is a true finisher, one of the better finishers in the SEC. And there's Hall with a big rebound. Dante averaging 11 and a half points, seven and a half rebounds a game. Right down the middle off the screen from Dante Hall in Alabama. How good is has he? Has tied at, this up. Dave, how good is he, is he at changing speeds? He came down full court, pumped the brakes, and then switch gears like a manual shift and then exploded again to the basket. One of the best in the country at changing speeds. Here it is right here. You're out of the chance. I think I got him. Nope. Right by Roberson and exposed to the basket with the finger roll. He's about as good as it gets at not only changing speeds, but controlling his ability to go by the defender. Alabama. Watch Vandy go on a 17-3 run. They've answered with an 8-0 run. Hey, Saturday at 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll take you to Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. This will be a good one, folks. 17th ranked Kentucky, number 23 ranked Tennessee. Coming up right here on the SEC Network, of course, streaming live on the ESPN app. You and I both are in agreement that this Tennessee team is one to watch out for. Well, and they've had success against Kentucky, especially uh, at home. But I think those are two teams that the numbers buy. Their name should be higher right now. I think Kentucky is playing outstanding basketball and will continue to improve. And I think Tennessee, again, is the Wichita State of the SEC. They do not take nights off in league play or non-conference play. Here's Lee. Doug Schaus calls a foul on the floor. That'll go against Colin Sexton, and that'll be number two on the freshman out of Mableton, Georgia. You know, it's, this is this is the Colin Sexton. This is how his name is known. I'm uh, down in the Vanderbilt batting cages. A lot of big league guys that used to play ball here. Right. Dansby Swanson down there hitting some balls, getting ready for the season. And 
He says, you in town for the game? I said, yeah. And he goes, you going to watch Colin Sexton tonight? You know, <laughs> you know I mean? Everybody knows about Colin. Well, he's worth the price of admission. When I was traveling around looking at teams before the season, ha had not seen Colin Sexton in person. And, and within five minutes of practice, I said, oh, yeah. He's exactly what everybody said. He's better than advertised. Won every sprint in practice that day. And you know Patriot Avery Johnson, he wants his team to play fast. It wasn't even close. He dominated. Only other player I've known to do that when every sprint is Michael Jordan. Not wow. comparing him to Michael. I'm just saying that type of win. Is that the act actor mindset. Michael B. Jordan or the basketball? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's the Mike. Okay. The swoosh knife. Right. That's short. And loose ball taken by Baptiste, and he'll rip that out of anybody's hands. Here's Lee. 3.45 to go here in the first half. Braxton Key can guard anyone on the court. It's impressive. Back to Roberson. Has a little save, too strong. He thought contact was coming. Sure, well, Braxton Key did a nice job of forcing him yeah. off of the line. He knows Robertson wants the jump shot first. Bad pass by Johnson. It's a run out. Easy basket for Vanderbilt and Saban Lee. Nice job defensively by Saban Lee getting out. Commodores were beginning to struggle a little bit. You talked about the run that Alabama was making, but that crowd needs to be commended. They got the Commodores back in it. They will not quit. Relentless Vanderbilt Commodores have answered the Alabama run, and they've done it on the defensive end. Commodores, no quit, up four. Vanderbilt leading Alabama 35-31, 3-11 to go in the opening half. Monday, you know what time it is. It's time for College Football National Championship, and we'll start our coverage with Alabama and Georgia right here on the SEC Network with SEC Nation at 6 o'clock Eastern. Then at 8.15, it's Feinbaum Fill Room with a multicast of the game with commentary from Paul Booger, Tim, Marcus, and Greg. We'll wrap it all up with SEC now at midnight with a full breakdown of the game. You catch all that, of course, on the ESPN app as well. What kind of year has it been? You go back over the last few months, and certainly it's been a dominating performance by this league, but what happened yesterday on the gridiron was truly remarkable. And this little nugget for you, don't forget on Saturday, this coming Saturday, Alabama Hoops is going to Georgia to play basketball on Saturday. <laughs> Listen, if, if you ever questioned Nick Saban before, if you ever question him, he erased all doubt. I mean, the Georgia second half was very impressive, but the way Nick Saban came out after everyone doubted him, everybody said they shouldn't be in the college football playoff. It was dominance from start to finish. Yeah. You give Nick Saban time, he's going to win. Look at these numbers over the last 12 months. Women's basketball, two teams in the championship game. Baseball in the championship series. And in football, it's coming out of two SEC teams as well. Let's not forget, there were three teams in the final eight of the NCAA basketball tournament on the men's side and one in the final four. Well, I don't want to upset any fans by telling you what's going to be in that question mark, but I'll say this. Nick Saban is 11-0 against his former coaches. You just upset some folks. <laughs> You can't, you can't not. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Vanderbilt has really come out here and played extremely well. I told you earlier, that, I mean, they trailed by 20 at halftime for the Florida Gators in their SEC opener. Well, Florida is a very capable team as well. They had a little rough start, a rough finish midway in the past, as you see another big basket by Saban Lee. But Florida is another team, knocked off Gonzaga, knocked off Cincinnati. Coach Mike Krzyzewski said he thought that that's the best team they would face when they were able to beat them versus Duke. Sexton lost the dribble. Roberson, boy, that would have swatted out of there by Herbert Jones. Did I tell you about that guy, Herbert Jones? <laughs> The length, the athleticism, he was out of this play, but the sprint to get back into it, nice Euro step, he was going to block that if he took off from the free throw line. That's what makes this Alabama team so lethal is they have multiple guys that are long, athletic, and their speed is something that you don't see in a lot of places. Fisher Davis. 
He's played 12 minutes here for Vanderbilt off the bench. Been out sick the last couple of days. That one was off the mark. 138 and counting before halftime. Seven point Commodore lead. Braxton Key. Tell you what, Vanderbilt's doing a nice job of tonight. Just staying in front. Staying in front and making Alabama knock down shots from the perimeter. They're saying, we know you can all get to the basket, but can you beat us shooting the three-pointer, knocking down mid-range jump shots? To this point, Alabama hasn't proven that they can. Lee, step back three. Boy, what a half for Saban Lee. He now has 14, came in averaging nine. Best game since scoring a career-high 24 points against Arizona State. And his fans loving it. Only one three-pointer in the last five games for Lee. He has two tonight. There's a takeaway. And that one's blocked by Ingram, but a foul by Avery Johnson Jr. And Saban Lee is putting on a show here in the first half. Well, here's just a nice job of him using the screen. And that time, Giddens didn't get out to help whatsoever and Lee knocking it down. But this is what I'm talking about. Your offense oftentimes is predicated on your defense. And now Vanderbilt's not only playing defense, but it looks like they're starting to enjoy it a little bit. Saban Lee knocks that one down. And don't forget, coming up on the SEC Basketball Halftime Report, get some first-half takes on this one from the boys in the studio. Bruce Pearl going back to Knoxville where he had so much success. That story will never die just because he was so good with Tennessee. So good. And an SEC dream team. Peter Burns, Antoine Walker, and Jimmy Dykes coming up at the half. Woo. How about that team right there? The scientist, the champion, and the chameleon. Peter Burns who can adapt to whoever's in the <laughs> studio with him. <laughs> the chameleon. Yeah, man. He's probably been called a lot of things. I don't know if he's been called that before. <laughs> you got to watch him at the half. Nice set play that time that by was. Coach Avery Johnson. Ingram. Or excuse me, Sexton leads Alabama with 12 points. Dante Hall's next closest with six. On the flip side, this guy right here, Saban Lee, has had some kind of half. That one is blocked, and that'll... Do it. Almost banked it in, but a 12-2 Vanderbilt run in the final 4-16 has given the Vanderbilt Commodores a 10-point lead, and Saban Lee has been the story. 16 points as Vandy has knocked down eight three-pointers in the opening half. That's the end of the first 20 minutes. Vandy out in front by 10. Time to get into the studio. Peter, it's all yours. All right, thank you, Dave Neal. Welcome into the Halftime Report. I'm Peter Burns, the uh, chameleon. We've got Antoine Walker, the champion, the scientist, Jimmy Dykes. And we've got Bruce Pearl making his return to Knoxville. Tumo Kiki trying to get it done. Tigers getting back in this game, tie ball game. And later in the first, Vols. Well, you know Admiral Schofield can hit the rock, shoot it. He did. 35-33 in a game in which the Auburn Tigers are getting blown out early, but they have made a run. Hi, hello. You heard all of our names earlier. Here we are on television form. All right, uh, First gentlemen. First of all, they never said who's who. I think I'm the champion. That's the scientist, and you're the chameleon. I Listen, I change colors. I don't know. Yeah, I would say, yeah, or I think yeah, we'll go that way. Not. We'll do it that way. Okay. Um, when we start looking at what happened, in, is, is this as simple as Alabama stayed up way too late watching their football team yeah, last night, Coach? Very, very well could be. You know, I had the Alabama A&M game on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Very impressed with how explosive and fast and Sexton in person is just a, a, on another level. One of the concerns I have for Alabama, though, uh, Tuan, they're a quiet team. You know, a young team that's a quiet team. And if you're a quiet team, you're not good in transition defense. Mm -hmm. And against Vanderbilt on their home floor, you better sprint back and talk and take away threes and take away transition baskets. Something to keep an eye on the second half. Yeah, and obviously, I just look, think about what Peter said. Think about Texas a &M game. They gave up 57 points for the game. They've already given up 43 points. So uh -huh. that's kind of a little hangover in itself. And then, obviously, this, 
Alabama team is not as deep, I think, as Avery would like. Mm -hmm. They're starting five, can play with any five in the country. But when you start to go to the bench, they, they lose a lot of production. So that starting five has to play well. And sometimes that can hurt you going on the road because you need some bench guys to step in and give sure. you some energy sometimes. And then they're not defending the three-point line. Yeah. The biggest thing you took out that Texas A&M game was that they held them to two three-point shots the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. They've already given up eight. Yeah, and there's no, and that's a tough gym to play in, in, in yeah, Nashville. There's no doubt about that. Tough to coach in. It's yeah. the whole thing. Tough. <laughs> we got some more basketball coming up a little bit tonight. Arkansas Razorbacks are going to be in action down at the hump against Mississippi State. What team do you think is for real, Antoine? Well, obviously Arkansas. I think that was a huge win for them, and, and I think now being ranked in the country, they're going to start to take off. They got three senior guards, and I said this earlier on mm. in the preview that they're going to be a very, very good team as the season goes along. In college basketball, you win games because of your backcourt play, and they got three guys that can do it. Looking forward to this one between the Gators and the Aggies. Both of these teams are extremely talented, Coach, and yet they've kind of gone up and down this season. Yeah, they have, and, and A&M's up and down is because of injuries and suspensions. So, again, tonight they're without D.J. Hogue, and, and Gilder's probably still out. So, as a result, you can really pack in your defense on the Aggies right now and, and force them to shoot threes. They, only, they were 2 out of 21 or 2 out of 22 mm. at Alabama. Tyler Davis demands a double team on the inside. So with no shooters on the outside, you, uh, it's easily to double team this. But kid, does right? Tyler Davis deserve a spot on the SEC Dream Team? We'll show you that next in the SEC Halftime Report. A lot of talk about Nick Saban. How about Saban Lee for Vandy? 5 of 10 from the field. He's got 16 points. Vandy up 10 on the Crimson Tide. You know, the guys and I were talking about how good SEC basketball is this year, kind of compared to other years. So we started thinking, how about the SEC Dream Team? Let's start, Antoine. Who are you rolling with a point guard right here, right now? That's a no-brainer. The best freshman in the country to me right now, Colin Saxton. This guy's a incredible yeah. guy that's averaging 20 points a game, leading the SEC in scoring, uh, whose future is as bright as he wants it to be. So mm. Colin Saxton is the guy I have at point guard right now. Do you, yeah. you disagree well, with him? No, he's the best point guard <laughs> in this league. Trey Young is the best freshman in, the, in college no basketball. Doubt. But this kid is, has a different game. How do you guard Moxie? That's the bottom line. This kid's got it, 20 points of all game. I trust it. Uh, the game late with him uh, handling that basketball. No doubt. How about shooting guard? Yeah, I'm going to go with a guy from Arkansas, Jalen Barfer. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think there's a tougher guy in the league right now mm -hmm. in that two-guard spot, making about 44% from three. If you want someone that's going to bring dog to the game yeah. in the right way, Jalen Barford's the guy. Dog or hog, wh yeah, whichever you want to bring, right? I like the Arkansas backcourt. I'm going to take the other guy. I'm going to take Now, Darryl that's a good backcourt is when you yeah. got two on the same team, right? <laughs> I'm going to take Gerald making the guy averaging 17 points a game. But the thing that stands out to me is his free throw shooting 87% and 45 from the Three. That's the perfect, you no know, typical two guard numbers that you want. All right, small forward. Who are you rolling? My with? small forward right here. You got to go Kentucky. I'm going with Kevin Knox. He's been consistent all season long. Yeah. Um, he's actually leading, the, actually leading the SEC in minutes played with 33 minutes a night. Mm. He's a guy that got a great mid range game, and he definitely can extend the floor. Have we ever been over here and him not have a Kentucky? Guy Unbelievable. Like There's <laughs> a consistency. Not that's all time. we ask for here. I'm at the sliding network. Dante Mate into the three. Oh, I think okay. That's, I think that's his natural position. Although okay. he can touch the game in so many areas. He is shooting about 38% from three. was over 40% last year. He's great with either shoulder inside. You can post him up. The, maybe the most versatile offensive guy in the league right now. Yante Maiton at the three, is a, he's hard to guard. Are you coming in at the four? Yeah, I'm going to go right there with Grant Williams because Solid. you just put him on the four somewhere. He's got to be in the five uh, best guys in the league right now. Only because he's a mismatch nightmare from that 12 foot mm -hmm. and in. Uh, can score with either shoulder, great hands, and has as big of a competitive Valentine as anyone in the SEC. I like uh, the small forward. I'm going to steal him a little bit. I like him better at the power forward position. <laughs> as I tell you, Mayden, I think um, obviously the guy's a 2010 guy in this league. He shoots 50% from the field. It's a guy we can really dominate inside. If he wants to play at that next level, I think he's going to have to extend his range to the three-point yeah. line. Yeah. But right now, I think he's you know great power forward at 2010. And, and we've seen that. He's trying to stretch it a little bit. I don't know if it's NBA twice. It's not yeah. Antoine Walker ready. We'll put it that way. <laughs> All right, center, who's the big man you want? Tyler Davis. You yeah. know, obviously, this guy's been terrific. He's done a terrific job of getting himself in great shape now, leading the league in uh, field goal percentage, shooting 60% from the field, another double-double guy. Um, just has gotten better and better, and now he's going to his junior year. He's playing terrific and got this team ranked uh, number five in the country. Yeah, you and I see the game very similar. Tyler <laughs> Davis, I had him Saturday at Alabama. Yeah. Uh, th this is a guy that can score over either, either shoulder. 
Um, he demands a double team. The problem he has right now, he's without shooters on the perimeter to open him up. Yeah. But the two best offensive rebounders in the league are Tyler Davis and Yonte Mayton. This guy's a handful. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, you have to guard his backside. He's got a big old backside that he can put on you. Easy, and easy now. Sir mix a lot. Hold point. on now. Uh, <laughs> I will tell you this. Yep. It is refreshing to see SEC basketball and this list not be 17 different Kentucky players because that's yeah. how it kind of felt over the last couple of years, guys. Timmy, yeah. we're going to have a little talk, though. We're going to have not one Kentucky player, man. No. Hey, I don't know what's we'll wrong. We'll talk about that more in SEC now coming up later tonight. <laughs> Colin Sexton was on that list, and rightfully so. He's got 12 points in this one, but the tie down 10 at half. More coming up after the break. All right, Nashville, Bryce Drew has to see this. Good ball movement. You get the ball to Matthew Fisher Davis. Three for three from downtown. He's got nine points. Bandy up 10 at the half. Second half coming up after the break. The Vanderbilt Commodores lead Alabama by 10 moments away from second half basketball. Vanderbilt with eight three-pointers. Now, Alabama got off to a good start behind this guy, Mr. Sexton. Well, they really did. They responded to the early run of Vanderbilt with their own nine to nothing run. And how did they do it? By getting into the teeth of the defense. Colin Sexton showed up in the first half. But his response was the guy we talked about, Roberson getting into the teeth of the defense and getting it out. The good penetration. But the story of the first First half was Mr. Lee. There's Robinson again, saving Lee though. Just unexpected trifectors. Did a nice job of distributing the basketball to everyone else. He was the story of that first half and the reason why Vanderbilt is up by 10. There are the numbers. Teams really got on both teams. Shot the ball well the first 10 minutes of the half, then things kind of settled down. But eight threes, the big difference to this one as Vanderbilt leads by 10 with the basketball. Let's see if Lee keeps it up. 16 points in the first half alone. Remember, he averages nine a game. Here's Evans, off to the chance. Good ball fake, step back, that's a three, and it's money. I love to watch basketball like that, Dave. You know, pretty basketball, shot fake, and then the wherewithal to keep that foot behind the line. Riley LaChance, who shot 48% from the three-point line last year. Well, there's a takeaway right into the hands of Brown. Roberson stayed with it and got it to go. Got to wonder, we mentioned that Alabama is a young team. How confident are these freshmen right now? Is there a tad bit of overconfidence after knocking off the top five team in the nation? Vandy has 13 points off nine Alabama turnovers. Might have brought the roof down here at Memorial Gym. It's a pretty sturdy roof, too. Been around for a long time. As Vandy closed the first half on a 12-2 run, they've added to that to make it a 17-2 run. Well, defensively, they are playing some of their best basketball. And there's our glue guy, Mr. Roberson, getting out into the fast break. He hurts you in so many ways. Alley-oop to Dante Hall. It might have gotten bumped and still got it to go down. I hope he's okay. He's a guy who has to make his presence felt even more. He has good size in the perimeter. If he gets it above the rim, there's no one on Vanderbilt's team who should be able to stop him. As we talked about for Vanderbilt, though, Dave, Alabama, in order to be that elite transition team, they've got to get stops on this end. Brown misses the jumper. Ingram the rebound. Alabama's got to get it and go. Back-to-back baskets. Boy, Dante Hall is hobbling back down the floor for Alabama, but Sexton, no hobble in his game. We hope Hall is okay. Looks like he's fighting through whatever it is. Not a lot of depth at the front line. Remember, they already have Riley Norris that's out with the hip injury. Yeah, Norris is going to shut it down for the season. Strong take, count the basket. Wow. Maxwell Evans, the freshman out of Houston, Texas. First foul on key. Any given night in the SEC, this is what can happen. Vanderbilt vicious in attacking the rim tonight. Uh, In games in the past, they've settled behind the three-point line. They are now figuring out that their inside presence has to be off of the pen- penetration. They don't have a frontline guy like Luke Cornette that they can throw it into this year. Yeah. 
Here's Hall. Off the mark by Ingram. It's a three on two run out. Now Alabama gets back and Lachance will back it out. Alabama's done some damage in the paint. They lead Vanderbilt 20 to 8 points in the paint. Problem is, they haven't been able to stop the three point shot tonight. Nine for the Commodores. With one on the shot clock, Vanderbilt will inbound it. Well, you have a couple of options. Either you can try to throw it up. You see Bryce Drew trying to come up with something. No Luke Cornett to throw it to this year. What you hope is that you can get someone off the screen for a quick catch and shot. Off the front of the rim. Off to Sexton now. Colin looking for a little bit of room. Up and under with a left hand. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know it's Coach Avery Johnson. He has to appreciate that. An outstanding player in himself, obviously winning the NBA championship. But now when you have the opportunity to coach the likes of a Colin Sexton, how good is that match made? Sexton leading the league in scoring at 20 a night, has 16 here this evening. Well, that missed everything. Key out to Colin Sexton. How about that pass and the finish by Ingram? You like that one? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did too, partner. I did too. <laughs> Worth the price of admission. And where's it coming from, though? Defensively now, Alabama turning it up on that end. Whew. Brown with a throw down. Nice look. Vanderbilt by 11. Here's Dante Hall. He'll face up. There's a cutting Ingram to the basket, and he is fouled. Yeah, nice job of Dazon Ingram moving without the basketball. And speaking of moves, who sings that song, I Like the Way You Move? Because <laughs> Colin Sexton is moving. <laughs> hey, Wednesday at 8.30 Eastern, we'll take you to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge, 17th ranked Kentucky, taking on the LSU Tigers right here on the SEC Network and, of course, streaming live on the ESPN app. Dave Neal, Damian Fishback, and certainly we've had a chance to watch Colin Sexton do his thing tonight. John Petty, a little bit quiet, but uh, certainly there are some unbelievably talented freshmen in this league. We decided to kind of take a look at it. I'd like to get your thoughts on, as we hit conference play, who's kind of been the guys that have stood out among the youngsters? Well, first and foremost, I want to make sure our fans know we knew who that was. That's Outkast, right? Yes, I, like the way I knew that. I, that was a test for you all. Right. But as far as our fabulous freshmen, I think it starts with Colin Sexton. Right. Uh, uh, he himself is an electric and dynamic point guard. Obviously, when you look at the way he's controlled this basketball game, worth the price of admission. But another good point guard, Tremont Waters at LSU. He's been one of the reasons Coach Will Wade in LSU has done an outstanding job. His game against Michigan uh, this year, a quality win. Hammonds of Georgia. I really like his length and size of the front line. And then Daniel Gafford at Arkansas made strides as good as anybody. And then Gilgis Alexander. Antoine Walker, I heard you complaining with Coach Jimmy Dykes. There's your Kentucky love. I think Shea Gilgis Alexander will be the key to Kentucky's run as they go down the stretch. Now, we just picked one from each team. I know Kentucky fans might be going, we have, you know, four or five each on there, but we just picked one. But there are other guys, too, that have played well. Jonte Porter, Tillman of Missouri. Those That's two right. guys have been really good. Uh, this... I keep going back to this, and the freshman group in this league is as good as I've ever seen it this year. Well, you have to give some credit. I mean, Paul Biancardi does a tremendous job, and uh, from what he said was the top 100 at ESPN, the SEC has 26 of them. So you're looking at a quarter of the top 100 kids coming to this conference and you mix that in with the coaches who have final fours and national championships and multiple NCAA tournaments and this is the result that you have every night you have good basketball in this league. Can I forget what Bryce Drew did in the offseason? He has brought in 
one of the top recruiting classes in the entire country Ooh. coming here next year. Similar to what Alabama's putting on the floor no tonight question. with their freshman class. That's how good that group will be. Been a quiet night for Petty. Sexton's done most of the damage. She leads with 16. He didn't make that shot, but yeah. that was still impressive. They knew he was going to the basket, and he still got there uh, with Colin Sexton. There's Baptiste. Gets it off to LaChance. Shot clock hits 10, but Roberson right into the logo. Up and under move. Nice. Slow, methodical, but effective with Jeff Roberson. You know, he's 6'6", six, six, he, but he plays so much bigger when he needs to. But he also plays almost like a small guard at times, too. He does. His versatility is what makes him impressive. And Dante Hall showing us a little bit of his versatility. The inside presence of either him or Daniel Giddens is what will take Alabama to the next level. They've got it off of the bounce. They need to be able to pass it down and get an easy basket at the rim from one of their bigs as well. Rebound to Ingram. And a foul against the Commodores as Dazon Ingram takes it to the basket. Matthew Fisher Davis picks up the foul. That'll be his first. You know, we've talked about these freshmen. We can't overlook what Saban Lee did in the first half. Another young player for Vanderbilt was 16 in the first 20 minutes. When you look at Claxton at Georgia, who's got good length and yeah. size. Obviously at Kentucky, you can look at a plethora of freshmen. I love P.J. Washington, Kevin Knox. Uh, that's why I think with their length, uh, green as well, you always have a, a, a select group of Kentucky players that you can choose every year. The difference with this year is the diversification, right? If the SEC was a portfolio, it wouldn't be in one particular stock like Kentucky, like it has been year in and year out. It's diversified amongst the entire conference, and that's the reason yeah. why you have the success in the non-conference schedule and why Joe Lenardi says that he feels like there's eight teams predicted that could make the tournament as of today. We haven't talked about Auburn's young guys. Woo! Well, Auburn having a, a tremendous night on the road at Tennessee tonight. Coach Bruce Pearl and Rick Barnes at this point of the season would have to be at the top of the line as your coaches of the year in this league. Here's Saban Lee. A little stutter step. Took it right to the big fella and drew some contact. He'll head to the free throw line. A lesson for young guards. Even though he was ahead of Dante Hall, he didn't go to the basket. Watch when he gets by him here. He comes to a jump stop, and then he actually initiates the contact against the big guy. Dante Hall frustrated, but if you're a guard, that's exactly how you want to approach bigs. Lee knocks home that free throw. Saban Lee, five out of six at the line. Now with 17 points, a game high total for him and 19 minutes of work. Daniel Giddens just entered the game because of Hall getting that foul. And I believe number four for the Crimson Tide needs to be critical. Here down the stretch, had 12 points and six rebounds versus Rhode Island. He's a guy who I think could make some noise tonight. But they've got to go to him on the interior. Sexton. High off the window. Hit the deck hard. Free throws coming up. Boy, it is hard to throw it inside to a big man when you have a guard who can get to the rim anytime he wants to, quite frankly. We talked about the speed. John Wall, De'Aaron Fox, who was at Kentucky last year. There's just some guys that are challenging to stay in front of, even when you know they want to get to the rim. I'll call him Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he got some fancy kicks on tonight, that's for sure. A little gold trim. He says he picks them out based on the op uh, opponent, so he's been sitting on those shoes <laughs> for this matchup. Save the gold. for the Commodore. Yeah. I don't even know what those cost. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, quietly, the Crimson Tide have clawed their way back into this basketball game. If they get a stop here, they can turn it into a two-possession game. Here's Baptiste. Out to Lee. 
Saban. That's nice. I mean, he's got, he's looking a little bit like Colin Sexton tonight, taking it to the rack. He is looking efficient going to the rim. That time, the mismatch of Daniel Giddens, he just used his speed to get by him. That's what Bryce Drew has talked about. How can we get some mismatches? And they've gotten that a few times tonight. And they get a switch on the other end. Alabama does. Now they get it to Giddens underneath. Nice job by Colin Sexton. That's what I'm talking about. He can score at any time that he wants. And Coach Avery Johnson told us in the shoot around today. He wants him to be a scoring point guard, the Steph Curry scoring point guard, the Russell Westbrook. However, on this team, the more he continues to evolve, which is what Coach Avery Johnson said he's doing night in, night out, and get his other team teammates involved as well as scoring, the better overall the tide will become. Giddens at the free throw line, just 43% this year, but looks good on that shot as Sexton tonight uh, with 16. But you see what he did against Minnesota in that three on five second half for Alabama. Put up together a 40 point performance. Still hard to believe they had to play three on five. Well, and it worked out effectively because they had a small forward, a point guard, and a big man that was still left in the game, but so impressive by Coach Avery Johnson and the tie. Eight-point lead, but Alabama trying to cut into it there. Baptiste with the block shot and then a reach-in foul against Giddens. And that'll be number three on the big fella. And that's where Colin Sexton has to continue to improve. He's so strong and athletic physically. I think stronger and more athletic than Trey Young of Oklahoma. But where Trey Young would be better there is he would have shot that little small floater. That's what Colin Sexton should have done over the outstretched arms of Baptiste. Roberson got hit across the arm. And that's going to go against Server Jones. Time out on the floor. Vanderbilt up by eight. Vanderbilt leads by eight, 11.42 to play here in the second half. And time for us to take a look at who's taking the next step. Brought to you by Regents Bank. And we've got a good one tonight. Saban Lee has definitely done that. Averaging nine points a game, he has poured in 20. The Corona Del Sol High School native has certainly stepped up to the challenge tonight. Colin Sexton comes in with all the accolades and worthy of those accolades. But I love the way Saban Lee has responded. He's looked and said, hey, I'm pretty good too. Stepped up to the challenge, and as a result, Vanderbilt out by eight. Bryce Drew says somebody's got to step up. We got to have multiple guys step up. But tonight, it's been Saban Lee. Roberson has a dozen. As Vanderbilt's hit nine three-pointers. Well, you know he's got tremendous genetics. Son of former Florida State and NFL great, Amp Lee. Also had a tremendous game against Arizona State earlier. We know they have tremendous guard play. Trey Holder. Arizona State, obviously the biggest shock of the country to me just because you just didn't see them coming to be a top five team at this point. Very impressive. The question is, just like this Vanderbilt team is continuing to take strides tonight, as you get into conference play, do you get better or do you get worse? Because you don't stay the same. Alabama has scored on seven of their last nine possessions, but they still trail by ten. And a hold on that low block, Baptiste holding Giddens. I love it. You know, when, when I went to the practice earlier today, uh, before the season, I said they have length, they have speed, they have a go-to guy like Colin Sexton, but who's their inside presence? Dante Hall has improved, but Daniel Giddens is a guy who I think can be extremely efficient as he continues to get more touches in the interior. Jones gives the pass to Giddens, who rolls it around the iron and through the cylinder. And he'll step to the free throw line with a three-point opportunity coming up. That foul went against Willis. That'll be his first. Well, and this is what we're talking about. Two guys on Petty. And then look at that wraparound pass by Herbert Jones. The versatility uh, of this offense is something that I think as the year continues to go, 
will become even more dangerous for opposing defenses. Boy, Giddens is a nice stroke at the line. How does he shoot 43% at the free throw line? I mean, that's a good looking shot. Two, two reasons. Number one, not getting there a lot. That happens with, with a lot of players. Uh, and then number two, just not prioritizing. It. Uh, for Alabama players, uh, the, the free throw percentage is a question mark for them. You think about some of those close games that they've lost, but they are better shooters uh, than they have displayed this season. Sexton taking a break. Alabama will put some pressure on the basketball. Has some success with the 2-2-1 back to the 2-3 pressure or 2-3 zone in the first half. Let's see if the offensive Vanderbilt becomes stagnant and stays out at the three-point line. Willis, he'll launch a three off the iron. Rebound to Fisher Davis. He'll line it up. You know he can shoot it. He had three in the first half, but misfires there. Eight-point lead for Vanderbilt. Here's Ingram the other way. Giddens is open again. Get it to him. Ingram on Baptiste. Kicks it to the corner. Jones short with it. Good offense, though. Good offense by Alabama. Good patience. Unselfishness. Just hadn't been able to knock it down. Braxton Key back the other way. Long outlet. Oh, my goodness. Herbert Are you Jones me? throws it down. Are you serious? How fast was that fast break? I mean, in the blink of an eye, they were out and scoring at the other end. Timeout. Vanderbilt as Alabama has cut this down to six. We'll take the timeout as well. 9.59 to go. Alabama making a comeback. Alabama has scored on nine of their last 12 possessions. They've hit six of 11 from the field here in the second half, and they have cut into this Vanderbilt lead. They've made it a six-point game, just under 10 to go, and they're starting to get out in the floor and run a little bit. They are, Dave, and they're doing it by the speed and defensive end. Now watch this. This is a missed shot, and then take a look. Herbert Jones is up, is up top. You're going to have other Vanderbilt defenders who have the same chance to try to get back, but watch the speed of Herbert Jones. The fast, the, the, the pass is always faster than the bounce. He gets out and leaves all of the Commodores in a split second. That's what I mean when I talk about the elite speed of four-second fast break by the Crimson Tide. Well, Alabama, when they run, are as good as anybody, but I think Vanderbilt has done a nice job making them play in the half court. They really have. Vanderbilt's actually done a, a tremendous job of getting back in defensive transition, uh, which is what you're going to have to make a priority when you play the Crimson Tide. Well, Evans, another freshman back on the floor. You see the Commodores struggling from the three-point line, but a nice finish on the interior by Roberson again. I'm going to have to stop calling this man a glue guy and just start calling him the guy. <laughs> Roberson came in averaging 14.7 points a game and now up to 16. And he just threw the fourth foul on Giddens in the process. Dante Hall back on the floor. Roberson trying to foul out Alabama's team. And again, we talk about the small ball, and, and the game of basketball has evolved. And Coach Cal at Kentucky talks about positionless basketball and Golden State with their success. Draymond Green and uh, Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. The bounce is just as lethal as throwing the pass inside if you have guards who can consistently get to the rim, and both of these teams have that. Avery Johnson Jr. knocks home a three. Avery Johnson Jr. came in averaging just shy of four points a game. He was 0 for 10 from behind the arc in the last eight games, but just buried that one. The chance. High screen and roll game, but they kick it to Roberson. And that one is blocked by Jones, and it belong to Alabama. Beautiful. Told you about Herbert Jones. The reason why the next level likes him so much is because of his length. 
He could be a lethal defender. He blocks that shot and is almost out of the picture. One through three position, I think he can guard effortlessly. Good call by our officiating crew. That definitely was knocked out of bounds by Vanderbilt, so Alabama will have it. Six blocks by the Tide tonight. Braxton Key out to Ingram. Braxton Key, strong take to the basket, score it for number 25. When he gets his swagger back, Alabama will be one of the most dangerous teams in the SEC. He makes them, he is a difference maker both defensively and offensively. Braxton Key. Near takeaway. Scramble forward at midcourt. The tie up. And Alabama's bench is excited and fired up. I love it. You know, for Avery Johnson Jr., it can't be easy playing for your father. You talked about him last year and the job that he did in the four time or four overtime win. I mean, he was able to knock down 23 points and now not getting the same amount of minutes you're playing with pros like John Petty, Colin Sexton, but he is displaying effort. What he's doing is he's stunting like his daddy, Dave. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Avery Johnson is halfway on the court trying to coach <laughs> him up. He was just reprimanded to get back over there. Loose ball. Vanderbilt has it. Oh, and Avery Johnson not happy with that possession, obviously. And turnovers have been an Achilles heel for Alabama tonight, Dave. There's turnovers. Have reached double figures now for Alabama with 11. The chance. Step Ooh. back three. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's tough, Mr. LeChance. That's tough. Braxton Key. Not a, what about that spin move, but blocked by Baptiste. Here come the doors. Toy inside blocking foul. He'll head to the line. As you go to the arenas this year, SEC fans realize that hoops are bigger and better this year. But right now, it's not the fans, it's the chance. And he's dancing. Big shot, young fella. Big shot. <laughs> Saturday, 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll take you to Thompson Bowling Arena, Knoxville, 17th ranked Kentucky, 23rd ranked Tennessee. Good old-fashioned SEC hoops rivalry. It's coming your way right here on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, the SEC has littered the top 30 in the RPI. You see where Arkansas sits. They are fourth in the country. And certainly a lot of basketball left to be played. But the good news is, generally, if you're not – in the elite coming into conference play, it was hard to move up in the SEC in terms sure. of there just weren't a lot of great RPI wins. But now you see these numbers, and there's certainly you could jockey for position. Teams like Georgia can certainly get back into that mix. They're kind of on the outside RPI wise of that top 30, but you have opportunities now. And that's critical because people look at me and, and they question when I say, everyone still has a chance to make it. I don't mean that there's all 14 teams that are going to make the NCAA tournament. What I mean is a team that has struggled like Vanderbilt, if they were to get on the run and finish in the top four or five because of the top 50, top 30 win opportunities that they would have to, 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 to complete if they did that, then they could still get in there. A team like Ole Miss, if you get rolling in conference play and finish in the top four or five, you would have accumulated enough wins to possibly get to the NCAA tournament. Well, that's the kind of night it's been for Vanderbilt, a friendly roll here inside the SEC's oldest basketball arena. 
you know, let's not forget that Vanderbilt had a sub 500 record in February last year and Great still call. got into the NCAA tournament. Now, the league is much better this year, yeah. and the challenge will be much steeper, but the opportunities are much more this year versus last year. Oh! Dante Hall from Braxton Key. Six-point Vandy lead. Six and a half to play. I love Alabama, unwilling to quit here on the road, realizing how valuable each and every win is in conference play. And a foul against Alabama. Let's see who picks that up. That'll go against Colin Sexton across the arm, and that'll be the third on the freshman. Well, each and every time you have a screen, there's going to be three or four guys involved. That time, Matthew Fisher Davis hugging his man on the right side of the floor which allowed Dante Hall to get open for that shot. Boy, that was a nice Alabama set play. It helps when you have the athletic Dante Hall that can get up way above the rim and bring it home. We mentioned it earlier. I mean, he's the type of guy who will make money simply by setting good screens, slashing to the rim, being a good finisher, making free throws. Coach Avery Johnson talked about how bigs, they get more confidence when they can go to the free throw line. They don't mind getting fouled and going to the rim strong. Well, Keith thought about the three. Here's Avery Johnson, Jr. getting some big minutes here in the second half for Alabama. Sexton, nowhere to go. He's doubled. Back to Johnson. Shot clock at five. Little floater by Avery. That won't go. A rebound by Roberson. Right mindset. Just wasn't able to quite get the finish with Avery Johnson Jr. Well, Chance has spent a lot of time at the point here in the second half. Well, he does a nice job of making good decisions and distributing the basketball. He's a veteran. Over 353 career assists. Fisher Davis. That won't drop. Rebound Braxton Key, who's starting to do those little things to make a difference. Right, he rebounds. He's defending every play. He can get you baskets inside presence. So critical for his team. In and out for Sexton. He thought that was down. He was backpedaling, thinking that was going to go through the cylinder. Not the case here at the Commodores. Dave, I don't know if it's wind or teams are just taking much more time, but that both teams are slowing the basketball down on the offensive end. This is where you still make solid decisions, but offensively, you still want to get out and put pressure on the defense offensively. That's where these two teams have both had success in the open floor in transition. The chance falls, lost the handle. Colin Sexton has it. This is what I'm talking about right here. And good foul by Roberson. But Sexton, a little bit out of control, might have bailed him out. He was out of control, and if, if Roberson had a stuck in there and had the feet set and taken the charge, he would have got an offensive foul. But defensively, when you've got guys coming at you 100 miles per hour, it's difficult to make that decision whether I'm going to try to move my feet and stay in front of them or whether I have good enough position to take a charge on a guy like Colin Sexton. Sexton with 18 points. He is five out of five, make it six out of six at the line. So good. Gets to the free throw line better than anyone in the league and is efficient when he gets there. That's the way you bring your team back when you're on the road. He is now up to 115 free throw attempts on the year and shooting 80%. And Antoine Walker and Jimmy Dykes in studio were talking about two best point guards in the country in most people's eyes. They'll have a chance in that Big 12 SEC battle to see who is the top point guard. Roberson trying to dump it down low to Brown and another turnover gives it back to Alabama. Trailing by six, 4-16 to play. Two mistakes on that play. The right idea for Roberson as a veteran, he needs to move, use the basketball, put it on the floor to improve his angle to make the pass. And then for Brown, he wants to wait and get his body on Giddens to provide a better passing angle for his guard.
Sexton baseline on Fisher Davis. Braxton Key, high arching shot. A little too strong. Rebound to Fisher Davis. Yeah, Key still rusty offensively. Not back to where he was before he went out with the injury. Only his third game back. Roberson. Up and Ooh. under, and Dante Hall was waiting on him. Swats it into the Vanderbilt bench. That'll get us a timeout. 3.34 to play inside historic Memorial Gymnasium. Dante Hall doing what he does. Give me that. That's what I do to you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Vanderbilt leading by six as we head down the home stretch. 3.34 to play here inside Memorial Gymnasium. Time for us to take a look at tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. And for that, we will go to the combination of Braxton Key and one Dante Hall. Yeah, it shows you the power of ball reversal and the touch of Braxton Key and the elevation of Dante Hall. Fisher Davis that time not getting back. And Hall making him pay the price. Talk to John Pelfrey, assistant coach for Alabama, who spends a lot of time working with Dante Hall. And says that uh, he's a young man that doesn't mind work, doesn't mind coaching, and has more skill in that body, in that frame. There is Coach Pell right there. It says that they're just scratching the surface of this young man. And he's going to show you down the road that he can step out, maybe not hit three, but step away from the basket and turn around and face up and hit some jump shots. Coach Pelfrey, one of the best assistant coaches, not only in the league, but in the country. Head coach at Arkansas. Did an outstanding job with Billy Donovan at Florida. And a nice set play out of the timeout by Bryce Drew. And, and Dazon Ingram got bad. popped. Somewhere in that play, I didn't see it, but boy, he'd been over immediately as Fisher Davis steps up and hits a clutch shot for the Commodores. Oh, his oh. own guy, Dante Hall, with a left hand. Wow. Mm. Nice to see that he's able to walk off on his own accord, but what a shot. Now, can you get a flagrant on your own team? Oh, man, <laughs> yeah. he is. He got just uh, out of nowhere, just that big left arm of Dante Hall just right across the bridge of the nose. And anytime there's blood with an injury associ associated with it, officials will go to the monitor and, you know, they'll see the teammate doing the damage. Oh. Mm. Yeah, just obviously. No ill intent by his own teammate, and they'll talk about that in the locker room for a while. And I'm sure when Dante Hall looks at it, he'll feel bad. And obviously, right now, he's on Ingram feeling bad, but shows a lot of toughness. We hope that he's going to be okay. Just hate that. He's on Ingram is a tough competitor. And he's showing us that today. Clark Holter, the team's athletic trainer, handling his business on that bench with Dazon Ingram. I'll tell you what, as, as a player, that's one of those times where after you start to feel better, all the guys and the teammates may chuckle about it in the, in the locker room. But for Dazon Ingram, it is not funny at all. He's in some pain over there. I think there's some blood on the court too that Sexton and Braxton Key pointed out. Hey, tonight at 11 Eastern, our boys in the studio, Peter, Antoine, Jimmy, will have a full recap of all the college hoops games plus QB school with Jordan Rogers breaking down Jake Fromm versus Jalen Hurts. Game tape from the semifinals will be broken down. It's all coming up right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. Peter and Burns looking extremely happy along with Jimmy Dykes in that The picture. chameleon? Is that what you call it? The chameleon? <laughs> Peter Burns? And Antoine Walker cool as the other side of the pillow. Big Herbert shot. Jones 
steps back, knocks home the shot, the freshman out of Greensboro, Alabama. And, and a much needed shot. Alabama right now, two possession game, but starting to run out of time. Every single possession now becoming crucial for the tie down the stretch. Quite a few Alabama fans have made the trip to Nashville, rooting on the Crimson Tide, making some noise. Wow, another he's block good. for Dante Hall. Forces another errant shot. Here come the tie. Three on two run out. Sexton. Petty. No good. Well, that almost ended up being a spectacular play. Braxton Key went up, got the rebound, realized he was going to fall. Instead of getting called for the walk, was able to make the pass to his teammate to salvage the possession. a two possession game with 225 to go and a foul by Hall as Saban Lee pump fakes in the lane and he'll head to the free throw lane a free throw line that's a third on Hall we talked about the ability of Colin Sexton to get to the rim and Saban Lee has been using the hesitation all night to get to the basket. And that time, we've seen Dante Hall block a ton of shots. Besides going up into the defender, the shot fake is obviously a tremendous way when you when you go against a shot blocker. 73% foul shooter on the year is Saban Lee. This fires there, couple of assists, 20 points, couple of three-pointers, 20 points in 24 minutes, I might add. Free throw is going to be big. The Commodores shoot 73.7% as a team. We'll see if Alabama can get it close enough to make them have to make some free throws. Timeout, Alabama, 2.16 to go. Alabama coming off a big win over Texas A&M. Largest margin of victory against the top 10 team, trying to keep that momentum going here in game two of the SEC slate. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt, a team that lost to Florida, 81-74, trailed by 20 at the half. It's been a struggle in the non-conference, five of seven before conference play. And if they're going to make some noise here, they're going to have to rely and get on the big shoulders of one Jeff Roberson, who tonight has played well with 17 points, four rebounds, and a couple of assists. He really has done it in multiple ways, Dave. You see him out here getting out on the fast break in transition. We talked about his versatility at the outset. Here he is against Braxton Key and over the outstretched shot blocker, Dante Hall. And look at him penetrating to the rim off of the left leg, showing some excitement. And for Jeff Roberson, the 6'6 senior, 220 pounds out of Houston, Texas, he's taken the leadership role, one of three 1,000 point scores on this Vanderbilt team, him along with Riley LeChance and Matthew. You know what I love about Roberson? As a freshman, averaged four points. As a sophomore, averaged nine points. As a junior, it went to 11. And now, as a senior, he's closing in on 15 points a game. I mean, just the gradual progression for this young man has been impressive to watch. You love to see that maturation. You can see the same thing with Yonte Maiton, right, at Georgia, who at this point has been SEC Player of the Year, in my opinion, from a consistency standpoint, from simply putting his team on his back. We'll see how the conference play in the year continues to go forward. Sexton out of the timeout, left it short, battles for the rebound, taken by Vanderbilt. Roberson had his hands on it and gets it off to Lee. One of the best jobs I've seen outside of the Texas game in the defense staying in front of Colin Sexton and not allowing him to get all the way to the rim in the late shot clock. Roberson off to Lee, guarded by Petty. Woo! I like that. Saban Lee now with 23. One off his young career high. Sexton dumps it off for Dante Hall who got fouled. That's where Colin Sexton will take his game to the next level. Everyone's going to try to key on him. Saban Lee doing the, his own version of Colin Sexton getting to the rim, getting by the shot blocker. And then Colin Sexton, look at Riley LaChance. I'm standing in front of you. You're going to have to shoot over me. But Colin Sexton being a nice distributor going upstairs to his teammate Dante Hall. 
Dante Hall with 14 points, six rebounds. They're watching uh, number two behind him there, Colin Sexton, kind of limp around a little bit. He kind of twisted that ankle on that last possession. Here's some pressure from Alabama. The chance tied up, taken away by Keene. He lays it up and in. One ten to play. Another tie up. Knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Vanderbilt, but the tie almost got another takeaway. <laughs> Alabama saying we're not going to allow you to walk out of this Memorial Gymnasium that evening. Coach Avery Johnson turning on the pressure, and I like the timeout being called. It, what it does is it gives Coach Bryce Drew a little opportunity to get his team composed as the officials, I'm sorry, take a look. Look at those hands by Braxton Key, not only able to get the deflection, the steal, but then maintain the basketball and then score it. And another deflection, and the officials now obviously have, a, have an opportunity to take a look and assess the situation. Vanderbilt by five. Commodores led by 10 at the half, 43-33. Stretched out even further to a 15-point lead early in the second half. And it's been an uphill climb for Alabama throughout the course of the evening. Let's see if we can get a better look here at who touched that basketball last. Boy, it's hard to tell. I mean, that when I'm glad that I'm over here yeah. in a suit and tie versus in no stripes. We're, we're looking at it in slow motion, and it's a challenge to see. And, and how critical of a play is this? If Alabama is able to get this basketball, difference in night and day. They're going to go with Vanderbilt. Doug Schaus, our lead official, our referee here tonight. Looked at all the replay views he could. Determined that Vanderbilt will retain possession 26 on the shot clock. And, and this year, obviously, came out now, reported Terry Moore, veteran official that's been yep. in the Big 12, SEC, three decades of experience, able to now review these plays back in the SEC in office. conference games in this conference year. conference games. And the SEC just continuing to take it up to another level. Roberson double teamed another takeaway Sexton has it outlet up to Ingram he lays it up and in under a minute to go Alabama does not have to foul loose ball timeout Alabama <laughs> and the Crimson Tide in the stands right now making themselves known and Coach Avery Johnson and the Crimson Tide have refused to go away in this basketball game. Boy, the pressure the last minute that Alabama has put on Vanderbilt in the backcourt has been intense. It has been a scramble for the doors to get it across midcourt. Unbelievable job by the Crimson Tide. Pressure, buzz pipes, and right now, the pressure of Alabama has changed the entire complexion of this basketball game and now have the opportunity to either tie or get within one point after being down by multiple possessions with less than two or three minutes left to go in this game. Vanderbilt has turned it over on their last three possessions in a three-point game. Here's Sexton, almost lost it. Whoop. Working on LaChance, drives the lane, throws it up, got it to go! How did that go in? Absolutely incredible. There's the double team in the corner again. Saban Lee picks up his dribble. The scramble, they finally get it across. Boy, that was close. Ten on the shot clock. 
LaChance. He lost it, but right to Baptiste, who lays it in. Timeout, Alabama. Did we say that every game was going to be a challenge? Colin Sexton getting into the teeth of the defense, relentless in attacking the basket, and the bench erupts. But Raleigh the Chance and the Commodores continuing to fight through, and even though they lose the ball, Baptiste at what we call the right place at just the right time. Three-point game, 15 seconds to go. Are you thinking first good look, or are you thinking three here? Well, I think right now, if you take a three-pointer and miss it, then you, you really put yourself out of the basketball game. But somebody who's been quiet all night, when I went to practice earlier, he said, take that shot again. That's a layup for us. That was John Petty. Take a look for John Petty. You want to get Colin Sexton attacking the basket, but if Petty is open, I like him taking the three-point shot anytime, anywhere. Alabama out of timeouts. Sexton right down the lane, took the two with six seconds left. Don't mind that basket. Now, what you have to do is you have to foul extremely quick here and a nice timeout called by Bryce Drew. And that's the last one for Vanderbilt. Coach Avery Johnson has tremendous amount of experience, especially with his NBA experience. I could tell he was trying to run a set, but with confusion, that's when it's tremendous to have the luxury of Colin Sexton. He just said, look, we're running out of time. We need a basket real quick. Goes and gets Alabama a basket so they still have life. However, in your situation now for Alabama, the clock is your ultimate enemy. You have to foul immediately. Here it is, Colin Sexton saying, look, we just got to get a basket, run it out of time. Use the off arm a little bit if the officials want to call a foul. But doing a nice job of just scoring on the road here and keeping his team in it. Bryce Drew, as we were wrapping up our conversations today with him at practice, you know, we talk about how do you slow down, how do you beat Alabama, and he says, you guys got any suggestions sarcastically? <laughs> and I said, just I go, I just say, hey, just keep it a couple possession game under a minute, and you guys can pull it out, you know, something like that. He says, we've done that four times, and we haven't won one yet. <laughs> so here we are. Can they do it? And this is the reason why I feel like this conference is so deep, because you have a team like Vanderbilt that's been in it against Kansas State, Middle Tennessee, fought, scratched tooth and nail against Arizona State, USC, and they're right there in it again with the lead against Alabama. You have to foul quickly. That's critical because the seconds that you say defensively are the same seconds that can allow you to get a good look on the offensive end. No timeouts for either team. Roberson will trigger it in. Fisher Davis gets the, there's the foul. Took him three seconds, but they fouled Roberson. A 91% foul shooter heading to the free throw line. Sure. Well, as we mentioned, Vanderbilt shoots about 74%. Nice job of Roberson running the baseline. Oof. And Roberson's foot got close to the out of bounds line that time. Good pressure that time by Alabama. Roberson and the obviously Roberson has a chance to knock down a couple of big free throws but he misses last ditch effort no oh. good off the side of the backboard and Vanderbilt knocks off Alabama 76 75 and a thriller here in Nashville well Outstanding job for the Commodores to get that first win. 
But for Alabama, you can take a lot of positives. We mentioned this is a tough place to play. They've struggled in the history here. Alabama, a young team, freshmen, probably didn't play to the likes that they want to, in particular John Petty, but they can take a lot of positive. Congratulations, though. The Commodore is doing an outstanding job fighting, scratching, and clawing to come out on top with their first conference win of the year. Saban Lee leads the way with 23. Roberson with 17. Colin Sexton with 24 points. Bryce Drew and company get the win. 76-75. Time for some more SEC hoops as we'll get you at the Starkville. Arkansas and Mississippi State coming up. For Damian Fishback, the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Nashville.